Yes. What's up, Hicks? Murph. How are you doing? Up? How's it going? How are you? My life is infinitely better now that I get to speak to you weekly about sports cards. You know what? My life is infinitely better as well. It's just it's fun time. Andrea goes, you mean you're, you're doing this again? I go, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, are you ready for a good show today? I am ready for a phenomenal show today. Let's get into it, Murph. Let's not even waste now, time. baby. You got, you got, uh, what do you got? You got like pickup school or baseball or something? I've got a con call so at 8.30, so let's just get right into this thing. Let's I'm excited to see the analysis that you have. So you lead the way as always. Sports card strategy show, Murph and Hicks, Paul Hickey, Nate Murphy. We are brought to you today by marketmoversapp.com by Sports Card Investor. We want you to save 20%, right, Murph, on Market Movers app by using the- I'm always willing to save something. Save 20%, man. And then, yeah. and then make us some money in the, in the meantime. No off season, all lowercase promo code. All right, so Murph and I are gonna have some fun today. We wanna talk about, I wanna talk about a little sports card strategy related to vintage cards. So the question, so we did a little bit of show prep, not much. Um, I did more than Murph, cause he has a real job and I'm just trying to do this sports card thing. And we're looking at, okay, let's say you have $500 to spend on vintage cards because we're in our 40s and we want to look at some vintage cards and and that's what we're going to talk about in this show can you actually make money buying vintage cards grading them flipping them and we're going to hopefully look at at least two different scenarios today maybe three and if we don't get to them all today we'll get to them in the next show but the first one murph and i are going to look at is should we chase a Ken Griffey Jr. Upper Deck 1989 rookie card? Should we specifically buy a box of 1989 Upper Deck baseball? And Murph, sent, Murph, you sent me a link in a WhatsApp message to a buy it now on eBay for this particular product. And I, I, I searched around a little bit more. And they're basically, if you want to buy, if you want to buy it now, not go into an auction, you're yep. going gonna to pay about $450, right, for a exactly. box of 1989 Upper Deck. And so we're looking at uh, 36 cards per pack. Sorry, 36 packs per box, 15 cards per pack. So you got, a, you got 540 cards. So Murph, before I get into my analysis, why don't you uh, give me your thought process on this? What's your, what's your take before we analyze this? Well, I mean, my take on something, on something like this is – you know, if you've got, if you're basically, you've got $500 and you're going to put, you know, 90% of it in to go after one or one card, you got to figure in that particular set, you've got somewhere in the, in the range of 650 cards to 750 cards that are going to be available in the entire set. So, you know, my whole thing is I, you've got two scenarios that you can, ha that you can go for. You know, you might get one Griffey, you might get none, you might get three right? You just, you just don't know what you're going to get in this scenario. So there's a little bit of gambling there. So my, the scenario that I posed to you yesterday is what does the individual want? Does the individual want to go for everything and go and try to find a Ken Griffey mm -hmm. Jr. card that you can flip fairly easily for like $1,500, $1,700, right? And the PSA 9.5, PSA 10. Or are you one kind of more like me where you're like, I want to be able to find a scenario where I can get I've got seven really good cards in that set. I've got seven really good opportunities in that set. And likely every third or fourth pack that I open, I'm going to get at least one of those. Right? And I build my way up to be able to ultimately sell a bunch of those for a, a significant profit. So that's the question that I pose to you is, you know, what do you do? We're going to get together for the first time in like three or four years here in just a few months. What do we want to do? Do we want to buy something together and go all in on looking for one card, maybe two with like a Gary Sheffield, something like that, or late years Nolan Ryan? Or do you want to go for like a box of 89 Fleer basketball? Well, let's be honest. You got 12 cards in there or 89 hoops 
where you got 10 or 12 cards in there, all of which are currently going for 50 plus, and you got two that are currently going for 250 plus if they're a PSA 10. So how much fun, which is always the premise of why you're starting to do this, make some money, have fun, how much fun do we want to have? That's what I post to you. Yeah, you hit all the right points there, my man. So let's get into the, the analysis. So there's no real way to tell how many Griffies you're going to get in this upper deck box. We all know that. And I did a little bit of Googling, and there's this really well-known sports cards uh, website that has forums. Probably the biggest forum is called Blowout. It's Blowout Cards, and, and so Blowout Forums, um, I found where guys were talking about something similar to this, basically like what are the odds that you're going to pull a Griffey out of these boxes? Based on my research, there are high odds that we would get zero Griffies. So if you're out there looking to do something like this, there's high odds you're going to get zero Griffies. I think the best case scenario is that we get two Griffies. Um, and so I think for our analysis, we should, we should keep that in mind, right? But we should say, let's, let's call a likely scenario that out of 540 cards, let's just say we get one Griffey. We're going to do the analysis based on one Griffey because I just don't, I see it being almost like winning the lottery to get more than one Griffey. I just don't. So we're, we're setting the over under at 0.5. Yeah. Over under at 0.5. Let, let's, yeah. let's take the over, right? Let's, let's say we yeah. get a Griffey. So now the, now we're going to break down the grading, right? So the PSA 10 likely resale value, let's call it, let's just call it $2,500. The PSA 9 likely resale value is $250. So you can see there's a huge discrepancy between the PSA 10 and the PSA 9, and that's pretty common for all cards. Then you've got the PSA 8 likely resale value, a little bit less of a difference between the 9 and the 8, that's $100. Now, Steve Sloan, the president of PSA, actually came out with an email uh, yesterday um, saying that they're opening up effective immediately uh, their $150 express. They're, they're opening up their express orders for $150 per card, which is actually good news compared to what happened in February and March. And that's a 30-day turnaround time is what he's saying. So that's like amazing news. 30-day turnaround time from PSA. Hard to believe that they're, they're back in a position where they can do that. So I think that's a factor. So I think from a grading perspective, my experience on grading um, is that we would be likely to get an eight. Okay. I think if we, I think hitting a 10, hitting our one Griffey 10 would be like a, an, another lottery ticket within a lottery ticket. So okay. I, think, I think we get an eight, which means we'd spend 450 on the box. 150 on the grading, 600 all in. We'd sell our PSA 8 for 100. The most likely scenario is that us and others out there, we and you out there listening and watching, would be at a loss of $500 if we go through PSA. Now let's go SGC, okay? SGC is $30 per card. Likely resale value of an SGC 10, $1,200. A 9.5 likely resale value, $225. A nine, 135, and an eight and a half, 100. 30 day turnaround time, $30 per card. I think we'd be likely to get an SG, I think we, we'd be likely to get an SGC 8.5 on our Griffey, which means we'd be. Sounds like we're losing money, Paul. 480 like all in. Money. We're okay. losing money. 480 all in. We sell the SGC eight and a half for 100, and we would be at a loss, a, less of a loss, $380 loss if we go through SGC. Now, if you want to, if you're, if you're questioning me, any of you listening, I know Murph, you, you probably not questioning me, but you'd probably be interested in this. If you go to nooffseason.com slash Griffey, it will take you to my Griffey PSA eight and a half. Look at that card and tell me if you can even find a flaw in it because I can't. So I don't know what the difference is. I, I don't know how you're going to get a 10 on this. My, my point is I, I don't, if, so to what you said earlier, yeah. now you've got the Randy Johnson rookie and you've got the Gary Sheffield rookie in the same set. So you're looking for Griffey, the unit, and Chef. And I like yeah. the unit and Chef. And those are fun yeah. cards to pull. You've got some holograms, some other things like that that Upper Deck did that are cool. Always like a hologram. And if you want to sell your unit, 
or your chef in a PSA nine or 10, you might make back an additional $200 total. So you're still, you'd still be underwater by a couple hundred dollars on this box, I think, unless you hit this lottery ticket. So like yeah. we talked about, like we're going to be getting together for the first time in a few years at this annual football trip that you organize. And the context is important here, right? Because if, if everyone out there wants to have fun, this could be close to a break even if you, if you count the entertainment value, right? And you count yeah. the nostalgia. So that, that's great. But if you're looking to do this for a profit, you're not going to make a profit in this scenario. Now, but what I, what I did find potentially, though, for those of you maybe looking to make a profit on this play, is buying the complete set. So there's, if you look carefully at eBay, you can buy sealed complete sets of this, which means that you're guaranteed the Griffey. Now, I did find one on eBay for $280. So you guarantee yourself a Griffey, submit that to PSA or SGC, and you'd be more likely to break even, you'd monetarily break even or even profit a little bit. Now, there's no entertainment value to that. There's, there's <laughs> none. There, there, there is, there's no fun. I mean, now granted, you're likely, you're highly likely to break even, potentially hit a home run, right? I, I mean, potentially that Griffey's perfect. And, you know, that Johnson's good and the Sheffield's good and any number of late stage career is, is good. You know, like we said, like we talked about through, through WhatsApp yesterday, which is, you know, it's like a company, right? You, you, the parts are always worth more than the whole thing. And this is no different in terms of the, the, the set that you're talking about. You buy the set for 400, you break it up, probably with no fun, maybe you make 500, you know, maybe you make 100 bucks, 200 bucks. But that, that depletes the fun value significantly it takes fun down from a 10 down to like a two right i mean because yeah. then you're just waiting for psa to get back to you with the results so then you've got that fun but maybe it's just more anxiety yeah and that, and that is fun that is actually really fun because getting my sgc grades and my psa grades back is like it's kind of like waiting for your pick in a fantasy football draft right so, it is it, yeah it's like did i get into college sweet yeah. Right. Did you get into college, by the way? <laughs> yeah, I oh. did. I got into numerous. Okay, good. Good for you. But I it also had one. the athletic stamp on it, so I probably didn't get into any of them, but since they had the athletic stamp, they let me in. Okay. So. Well, you are quite an athlete. So now, um, I, I, do think the, I, I do think that if you want to make profit, you can make an offer to the seller on eBay because the seller on eBay wants $280 for this particular sealed box. So if you want to make profit, I mean, you could make an offer of like a hundred bucks, see if, yeah. see if they accept it. And eBay will let you go back and forth multiple times to where maybe you landed like 190, 210, 215. So you get this box maybe knocked down a little bit to where then now you know you've got a Griffey in there that has a high chance of a nine or at least an eight and a half, I would say. And then now you're rolling the dice and seeing, hey, maybe if it is a 10, now I've 10 x to my, my investment and you're taking the lottery ticket aspect out of even getting a Griffey. So I just want yeah. to throw that out there for, for people yep. watching and listening. Um, so I got two questions for you now, Nate, before we get into okay. the next topic. So yep. number one, how important, now you make a lot of money already in your job. Um, <laughs> some people out there don't, but you're also an investor in, 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 the, in the stock market and in certain aspects. And so so even though you're, you're rich already, uh, you're in the top 1%, um, Lord. Money, making money on these things is important to you. Like that's how you, you know, that's part of the reason why you are so wealthy. So Tell me one person that doesn't want to do something and lose money. Show me that person and I'll show you an idiot. Exactly. No, I, I agree. But, but how important is the fun aspect? Basically is where I was going. It's, it's significant. I almost bought a box of cards just the other day saying, you know what, I haven't done this in 30 years. Why the hell not? You know, I mean, I almost did. I actually looked on Craigslist to see if anybody was selling anything. They had 40 packs of uh, initial inaugural Skybox for a dollar a pack. Emailed him and said, hey, you, want, you still got these? Let, 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 let me buy them. I mean, why well, the hell not? Right? Craigslist. So, I have a bit of fun aspect that you've kind of got me going in on this that I haven't even thought about in 30 years. My 12, 11 year old self was not about as much of the fun 
as the 43-year-old self does. But I also see compounding value that is there. So if these things, if, if the Griffey was worth $42, you're like, well, shit, that's just what I bought it for back in, you know, 1990. I don't care. But there's more value there. So I would say that there's more of a 50-50 fun aspect to this than anything. Yeah. And, and fun it- to profit and all that. I know that I have nothing but profit at my mom and dad's house. Period. There is nothing but profit there. But why am I considering just going and buying a box now on eBay when I could just spend the same amount of money flying home, flying back, and bringing a suitcase full of the stuff back, right? It's just because of the fun. There we go. It gives, and you, us, gives you and I something to talk about. I love it. And, and actually, you answered my second question. Because my, my second question was going to be, if you already have one of these boxes, why wouldn't you do it with one of these boxes? And it sounds like you would, and you may yeah. do so. But in the meantime, you want to have some extra fun, which I think is totally cool, and we still may do it. So who knows? The other thing we yeah. haven't really talked about, which we'll get into in this next scenario, is kind of the ungraded aspect of this, because I actually think there's a lot of opportunities to not grade these cards. I did a, so I, li- I did a little bit of research around, what if we just leave some of these cards raw or ungraded? So if I use the term raw, that's what I'm, I'm referring to. Okay. Um, and so you brought up in our in our text message, WhatsApp exchange, you said, Hicks, what if we go and look at the NBA hoops from 1989 or 1990? And for this next analysis, I really just focused on the 1989, mainly because, well, I really just like the the fact that we were sticking in the same year as Griffey, 1989. Yeah. Let's just stay in the same year. So I'll do a quick overview of my analysis um, but before I do that, why don't you give me your take on what, what intrigued you about, about the 89, uh, NBA hoops set that you wanted to, to look into? Well, you know, you post the, I sent you that box about the Griffey. You said, Hey, that would be a really good idea. And then I started thinking about it and I kind of think about the way that, that I typically think, and this is something that we talked about maybe 10 minutes ago, which was, you know, do you want to go for the home run with one card? Or do you want to go with a likely a set of cards in a given year that have a lot of good stuff in them? Something where the investment isn't significant. Yeah. Could you go 1988 Fleer where you've got rookies all over the place? You got one of the best drafts of all time. Um, You've got, you know, a couple years Jordans, all that. And you're going to spend seven to 10 grand getting a box of those. And I actually watched an opening of a box of those. We should talk about that at some point. It was like pack after pack of Hall of Famer. It was crazy. So anyway, um, we talked about that because I wanted in, in that box, I believe your because of the amount of players in the NBA, the amount of teams in 1989. Remember, there were probably six less teams in 1989 than what there are today in the NBA. So you had half the amount of players you had the same amount of packs in the box and you also had the same amount of cards in each pack. So your chances of getting things like Jordans, David Robinson's, late stage magic, bird, all of these kind of, I would say great player hall of famers that currently are going PSA nine and tens in the 30 to $70 range, plus you obviously got your Jordans and David Robinsons that are going in the hundreds at that level. Your chances of getting those are exponentially higher simply because of the amount of teams that were in the NBA and the amount of players that are on every team. You don't have 24 cards a team. You got 12. I mean, even people like Steve Kerr, Steve Kerr, who as a player would be going for a nickel on the hoops card, because that dude's won NBA championships as a head coach, he's going for 30 or 50 bucks. Are you kidding me? Steve Kerr? Come on. I mean, that's what I like. Give me the opportunity to have fun, the opportunity to bring 27 cards into the mix with a lower cost of grading and all that. If they're still going for 35 at the lower cost of grading, I'm in. Bring them all together. I can get that box for 100 bucks. I likely have already made my money back by pack number nine. 
So why wouldn't they do it? That's what I'm thinking. I mean, in theory, well, let me just say, you absolutely nailed every single point that I think everyone listening and watching this show should be thinking about. You have brought up so many strategic points that people don't think about, like literally half the, half the players. So you've got the same amount of cards in a box with literally half the checklist, 353 cards in the 1989 NBA Hoops Series 2 checklist and 700 cards in the Upper Deck Baseball 1989 checklist. So, and you've got all these superstars. So you've nailed it. And in theory, this should profit. Let's yep. break it down and see if it actually does. So I think one aspect that gets overlooked with sports card investors is do you do the buy it now on eBay or do you do an auction? And I can tell you right now that if you do an auction, you're going to save about 50 bucks. So if you buy a box- What percentage now, is that though? So 50 bucks on 500 or 50 bucks on 150? You're going to buy, you're going to pay 125 for a buy it now and you're going to pay $75 so what's that, like a third? I'm auction. It's what's more that? than a third. It's like 40%, right? It's like oh, yeah. No, that's significant. That's why I wanted to yeah. know. Is it 50 on a 500 or is it on our specific example? Yeah. So, yeah, that's 40% savings just by waiting an extra hour or day to get yeah. what you want already. Yeah. Or you can do – or or you could do a offer, right? You know, an offer on a buy it now and just say, you know – if you really want it right away, you can say, I'll give you $99. And at least you save, you still save 20. And every dollar is important when you look at, are you going to profit from this? So let's say, let's say you $75 per box, right? Yep. So you've got same amount of cards. We're, we're ripping open about 500 or so cards. And you've got Michael Jordan base card in a PSA 10 is going to be $220. David Robinson rookie card 138, the press conference with the jersey. Love it. Be, and a PSA 10 is $800. So that's, that's your biggest hit, actually. The David Robinson rookie card 310 with the left-handed free throw uh, is on Series 2 only. So you're going to want to buy a box of Series 2. That's $135 in a PSA 10. Then you've got Magic Johnson base card PSA 10, $75. Michael Jordan PSA 9 all-star card, 36 I threw in the 9 because you're not going to get a 10 on all of these. And then you've yeah. got a bunch of guys. You've got Bird, Barkley, Akeem, Malone, Stockton, uh, Pippen, Dominique. You've got a Detroit Pistons championship short print card. I'm sure you've seen that one where they're – Absolutely. And so what I'm thinking is you've got at least uh, 10 cards where you can sell them raw for $5 each. So let's say you've got $45 uh, just from selling – or 50 bucks just from selling 10 different cards raw. Um, I'm going to rule out PSA grading because it's just not economical for this set. So if you say no, SPC not for the, grading. Maybe for certain cards, right? I mean, maybe maybe for some, like you got, you got seven Robinsons. Hell, you're going to throw those in. I mean, you, maybe you think about it, right? But yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, you're actually. Not. I mean, if you, you, you've if done the analysis, you pull, just showed up. Yeah, if you, pull, if you pull multiple David Robinson 138 cards the press conference where he's holding up the jersey um yeah you could do you could justify if you if it's perfectly centered and crisp corners and looks clear and everything and the back same thing uh you could submit maybe one or two of those but then you're yeah. you're, you're obviously you're near profit. increasing your margin for error you know you could bomb the entire thing but but that's but hey it's about fun right so you want the fun yeah. But I think SGC is your play, and I think you're most likely great again on these because I've handled, I told you in our text message, I've handled this set more than any other set. And I'm telling yeah. you, it's not great what I've seen, not from a condition standpoint, but from a centering, up-down centering is pretty hard to find really good. Right-left centering is pretty hard to find really good. So your best bet might be selling these cards raw, to try to break even and get your get your seventy five dollars back, or go to SGC and hope for eight fives, nine nine fives, and tens. Um, I think if you, depending on who you pull, your worst case scenario on this box is you're gonna you're gonna get about sixty bucks revenue, so you'd lose fifteen bucks. Um, but I think your best case scenario is that you can make 
you could probably easily make 50, 60 bucks profit on a box like this. Um, depending on who you pull, even just selling them raw, but I would get your raw. That's not selling raw. In the scenario. Yeah. Okay. I'd get your Robinsons and your Jordans graded by SGC. And I'd, and I'd, I'd sell all the other guys just raw on eBay. And I think, like I said, use the other, there, use the other guys to stuff. make the money of the box back and then use your two, maybe three gradable op players opportunities to potentially hit the, the, the larger one. But you've got to like your chances of a, a bunch of raw ones going for the price of the box, potentially, yeah, right? Absolutely. So just to recap, Griffey, entertainment versus ROI. If entertainment's the play, do it. If financial gain is the play, I would avoid it. Um, 1989 hoops. I think you break even, worst case scenario, financially you break even, and you had a heck of a fun time. Um, yeah. There's no real upside financially like there is with a potential Griffey, but there's a high floor and very low risk. And God, those, those guys are legends. I mean, uh, even just getting – here's the other thing we haven't talked about yet, Murph. What's your take on, let's say – we do the 1989 NBA hoops and we get yeah. a lot of these legends and we get them graded and we say, you know what? What if, what if one of the Irvin magics comes back? What if three of them come, come back as tens? What's an Irvin magic 1989 NBA hoops SGC 10 going to be worth or a Jordan 10 going to be worth in you know, when we're 65, 20, 25 years from now, when we're 65, 70, is it going to be worth significantly more than a couple hundred dollars, which is what it's worth now? I think the biggest question in that, Paul, is what does this whole sports card thing go to? You know, I mean, if you would have, you know, given me, if you would have told me that you had to send your cards in the mail to get them graded back in 1990, I'd be like, what are you talking about? You know, the corners look good. It's got the guy I want on it, you know, and all that. So I don't know. You do an S. Who knows if PSA is even around? Who knows if SGC is even around? I mean, that's the question that you've got to look at 25 years from now is what is that going? What is this like marketplace going to be? I don't know. Um, it could be real. You know, that could be a, an awful grading system, you know, well, deemed in an 10 years. Good, but what is the card what is the card worth when Magic Johnson is likely not alive anymore? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, he, he's not playing any more basketball. His book, his story has already been written. I can't see a scenario where it wasn't worth 30, 50% more at the very minimum. Um, I mean, I, I, I just don't, I don't see it. So maybe it's a couple hundred bucks, but you're going to have to wait. So you're going to have fun now but you're not going to get anything out of it like what, you know, 12 year old Nate Murphy did. Yeah. I think the skeptics would say, look, there's no extrinsic value in a base card that was overprinted in a guy's non rookie year. Right. But at the same time, you've got SGC as a brand, the number one sports card, highest selling sports card of all time. As of this recording is an SGC three Honus Wagner. So the brand right. SGC uh, should be strong. Is there any okay. That's value fair. In, an, in an Irvin Magic Johnson SGC 10 or a Michael Jordan SGC 10? I think there's intrinsic value maybe for, for our family down the line and things like that. So, so those are there just- There will always be value that. in three words. Michael, Magic, Larry. There will always be value in, in, in yeah. those guys. It, it's not going away. You know, I mean, it's just not going to. It's just, it's just a matter of what does the marketplace do? I mean, a Magic Johnson 89 hoops uh, uh, 24 months ago, $15, yeah. right? That's probably what it was going for. Seven years ago, probably six. You know, so it, it's yeah. changed a lot. And it's just the bull market when it comes to this. It's, it's a bull market. It's changing rapidly. And... But Magic Johnsons will be there. As guys like us age, as parents of guys like us throw all of our crap out, 
yeah, it was overprinted, but they're going away. They're just slowly going away. There will be less and less all the time because they're not printing any more 89s. They're just not. They're done. And, and we got to wrap it up, but before we do, this is actually a perfect segue because the 1987, 88, and 89 Fleer basketball, there's a lot of value there monetarily in the same way that we just broke down the 1989 hoop set. There's a lot more value. You alluded to the rookie class of 88 where you've got not only Scottie Pippen and Reggie Miller and Dennis Rodman, but you've got technically John Stockton's rookie card in 1988. And there's two of them because there's a base card and an all-star card. And it's definitely not his rookie year, as we know, but, but it's his first ever card. And so that set in particular, there's money to be made in. And I think we'll explain how in the next show. And I think uh, we'll definitely have double the amount of time in the next show. I will as long as you can. And I, do. Uh, I think we should also maybe compare some of that to the modern NBA card market. Because I want to get you... I want to get you talking modern as well. It's uh, a big lift for me, Paul. It's a huge yeah. lift. Murph, yeah, I've but, seen you do I can do it. You're going to have to give me some prep time. I can't do this in, an, in, in 20 minutes of prep. Last week, you threw me out some names. I didn't even know who three of them were. So I'm gonna, like I always say, don't tar start talking to me about players until they're making a check from their team. Don't start talking to me about them in college and all that. I don't care. Hey, Murph. Give them when they're making checks. A, I've seen you do way bigger lifts than this. Yeah, and I B, do. I'm going to prep the shit out of you for next show, buddy. So Done. Do, I'm in. Do even prep it out. I'll have analysis for you. I'm in. All right, Sports Card Strategy Show. We are rolling. We're wrapping up right now. Thanks to our sponsor, marketmoversapp.com by Sports Card Investor. What we really need you to do is sign up for marketmoversapp.com using the promo code no off season, all lowercase, save 20%. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Murph, you have an amazing day. Enjoy NFL you too. week one and uh, say hi to the family and I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Already got the spread right last night. Go Cowboys, go Cowboys, minus seven and a half or plus seven and a half. Dak Killed attack it. CD lamb cards, baby. Talk to you later. Whoop, whoop. See ya.